everybody, and welcome to day one of the Birch Sew Along. Let's get started. First, you're going to cut out all your fabric pieces. If you look on pages 9 and 10 of the PDF, you'll see a couple of sheets that are your fabric planners. These sheets can help you determine what fabric is going to go in what spot. Once you know what fabric's going where, let's talk about interfacing. On the pieces that you need to interface, there's two ways to do it. If you're using a lighter interfacing, you can apply the interfacing to the entire piece, like I show you here. If you're using a heavier interfacing, though, you'll want to cut away the seam allowance. You can see here that I've cut away about a quarter to a half an inch all the way around the interfacing. This helps when it's sewn together not to create such a bulky seam. Once you've determined which interfacing you're going to use, then you'll apply it to all the required fabric pieces. One more thing to remember when you're cutting out your fabric is to make sure you transfer the pattern markings onto the back pieces of both the lining and the main back backpack. These markings help show where your straps will attach at the top and the bottom of the back. Last but not least, let's talk bias tape. I cheated this time and bought pre-made, but I'll add a link below to a blog post by Becca that'll show you how to make it on your own. Welcome back to day two. Let's get started with the pocket ruffle. First, take the ruffle and fold it in half. You'll want to iron it well. Then go along and sew two gathering stitches, one at an eighth of an inch and one at five eighths of an inch. This will help keep your gathers even when you sew at the quarter inch seam allowance. Use the markings from the pattern to determine where the ruffle should be flat and where it should be ruffled. On the side pockets, it's just on the ends. On the front pocket, you'll leave the ends plus a space for the trim to go later. Sew along the seam allowance between the two gathered stitches. Now let's attach the bias tape. You'll want to open it up and pin along the top edge. Sew right along that top memory crease. This is where the double-sided tape comes in really handy. Set it just above the stitch line, and then when you fold your bias tape over, it will hold it in place nice and secure. Flip your pocket over, and when you sew, sew just below the bias tape line. Make sure that you caught the bias tape on the back with your stitches. Trim off any excess. Continue through step 27 to create your bow. Don't forget to tack the middle section down. Now let's attach the bow. Start by placing the top of the bow just below the bias tape and pin. Stretch the rest of the bow out taut along the side of the pocket and pin in place. Once the pocket is pinned, you're going to baste along both sides. Don't worry if the pocket is pulled in on the edges a little bit. Everything will lay flat when its construction is complete. Let's move on to the zipper panels. You're going to find the center of both the lining and the main, as well as the center of the zipper, and pin together. Then, work your way towards both edges, creating a sandwich of the zipper lining, the zipper, and the zipper main. Stitch along the edge. Once completed, flip it out so that the lining and the main are both right sides out. You'll, then you'll iron well and top stitch along the edges of the zipper. Next, you'll complete the pull tab. Once done, center it on the zipper panel and baste in place. Let's create the gusset. First, start with the main side panel right side up. Place the zipper panel right side down. Then, place the side panel lining right side down. Sew along the top edge. Flip inside out, iron, and top stitch. Now let's attach the pocket. Line up the bottom of the pocket with the bottom of the gusset, making sure to keep the bow straight and flat along the edge. The top of the pocket will overlap the seam slightly, based on both sides. To finish the gusset, you'll place the bottom main right side up and the pocket right side down. Place the lining right side down and sew along the top. Repeat for the other side and you're done. Welcome back to day three of the Birch Sew Along. Today we're going to start by assembling the front three pieces. When you line them up, you'll notice that the outside curved edge creates a little triangle at the top. Iron those seams open and then go back and just clip that triangle off. After you've attached the front pocket, let's add the trim. This is another great time for double-sided tape. Just run the tape right along that front seam, all the way across the pocket. Then, lay your bias tape on top, 
let everything get stuck in place, and this will hold everything nice and secure when you go to top stitch. The last step of the day is creating the back. I personally like to use quilt basting spray on the foam to keep everything held in place. So spray it on the back of the foam and rub it in well to the wrong side of the lining. Then spray the top of the foam again, apply your main fabric, rub it well, and then using the measurements from the pattern, you'll sew two lines down the back. That's it for today. Hey everybody, welcome back to day four of the Birch Sew Along. First thing we're gonna do is layer up our straps. You'll have the main, the foam sandwiched in between, and then the lining. One quick tip I really like to use is quilt basting spray. If you'll spray it on the wrong side of the main and the lining fabric, and then adhere it to the foam, everything will stay in place. Once you're done, just top stitch down the middle. Now let's add the bias tape. When you open up bias tape, there's a few memory creases on the inside. What we wanna work with is the one closest to the edge. Now we're going to clip or pin our bias tape around the edges of the strap. I like to add just a little bit of extra bias tape at the tops of my straps. So just in case anything shifts, I have a little extra give and extra room just in case I need it. Now when you're pinning all the way around the edge, you wanna make sure that the bias tape stays nice and clean and that all the edges, especially around the curves, stay straight. Then once you're done, you're going to go and sew just inside that memory crease we talked about. Once you've sewn, flip your strap over and let's attach the back side. I really like to use fusible tape here. You can either lay it on the strap or I actually prefer to put it on the bias tape itself. I'm just gonna show you with a small section here. You'll put it on, you'll pull the backing off, and then we're going to very carefully just cover the stitch line that you just made. It's very important to make sure that those stitches are completely covered. Continue that process all the way around the strap, being careful to keep the curves straight. Flip this strap over, and we're going to stitch in the ditch between the bias and the strap. Make sure to catch the bias on the back side. Let's talk about webbing. If you're not using 100% cotton webbing, then I would suggest melting the ends. All this takes is a lighter and just barely going along the edges to make sure that they're fully melted. This will help everything stay in place and make sure that your webbing doesn't pull out or unravel under the weight or the stress of everyday use. And y'all, I feel like this should go without saying, but please be careful, this is fire. Don't burn yourself. Let's attach the slide adjuster. So there's a front side and a back side to the slide adjuster. You'll wanna flip it over so that the back side is facing up. Now you'll take your webbing and you'll insert it going down and then coming back up, just like I'm showing you here. You only want to catch that one little bar on the slide adjuster. Now using the measurements that are in the pattern, you're going to fold part of the webbing up and then part of the webbing down so that it will meet right there in the center. Then you'll flip it over so that the part where it meets touches the strap. At this point, you'll use the markings from the pattern and you'll sew your square to attach the webbing. I've already folded up and clipped the corners of the strap holder, but I wanna show you how to insert the webbing into it. You'll fold from the top corner to the center and iron well. Then opening up the triangle, you're going to insert the webbing into the fold itself. Then you'll close it back and top stitch along the bottom and the side and you'll sew your square just to secure the strap a little bit more. Now attach your straps to the back according to the pattern and you are done. All right, welcome to day five of the Birch Sew Along. Let's attach the gusset to the sides. Let's start by finding the top center of the zipper panel and the top center of the front panel. Line those two up and pin. Then working your way around each corner, we're going to continue pinning. Be careful to keep everything straight and smooth around the corners. Now let's jump over to the bottom. Doing the exact same thing, find the center of the, of the bottom panel and the center of the front piece. Line those up and again, work your way around the corners. Then finish pinning the sides and sew all the way around. Repeat for the other side. 
Once you have both sides done, let's attach the bias tape. When you start, make sure that the very first part that you put down is folded under. This will give you a nice clean edge once it's wrapped around the raw edges of the gusset and the front panel. Once you've attached the first step of the binding and you're ready to fold it over, this is another great time to use the double-sided tape to hold everything in place. Fold the edge over and sew right along the binding. And that's it. Congratulations on completing Birch. Happy sewing.